Hey everybody, John here with Havoc Maker Studio. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the Affinity Kickstarter that's coming up. It is a sci-fi fantasy combination uh, campaign books for the 5th edition rule set of Dungeons & Dragons from Wizards of the Coast. So, what is Affinity and why do you need to get invested in it? We're going to go over that in detail, but before I do that, make sure you jump down below Hit the subscribe button. Make sure you leave a comment, and let's let's get into this. So, what is it? DSX Machina is a uh, company out of Canada that produced the Ultra Modern Five RPG source book, which is, I had to say, the definitive source book for the fifth edition rule set. So much that. Ultra Modern 5, in my personal opinion, should be what Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition should be. <laughs> no other way to put it is that Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition should have a, should aspire or should have aspired to be what Ultra Modern 5 is. Now, Ultra Modern 5 came out a few years ago and it was funded. All the stretch goals were unlocked. And just a quick overview of the Ultra Modern 5 system so you'll have a, an inkling of what is going on is that Ultra Modern 5 is a source book. So you still need the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition rule books or core books. Really, you can get by with just the player's handbook, but the Dungeons Master's Guide and, of course, the Monster Manual can be helpful. Now, what you're getting in Ultra Modern 5 is everything you need to run non-fantasy-based games. So from, say, Victorian era to your space operas, your modern to light sci-fi, cyberpunk, superhero, all that is in this book. Now, where Dungeons & Dragons usually has you create uh, your attributes, this is like your strength, your intelligence, your personal charisma of your character then you choose your race or species and then you get into your class and then your background ultra modern 5 kind of turns things around okay what they do is slightly different is you will build your character uh, normally with your attributes so you, you need your you need your attributes then you're going to select your race or species whichever terminology you prefer Instead of jumping straight to your classes, you're going to get your background. So your background is just like Dungeons and Dragons, where you um, this is where you came from. This is your past. It's going to help build up your character. It's kind of like the foundation of what you are at the beginning of the game. You get your bonus skills, some knickknacks and whatnot. Pretty much the little side thing that most people just ignore throughout the game <laughs> then you have what's called the ladder so if the background is what you or where you came from kind of what you were the ladder is what you are now and what and kind of how you're living so you could be a leader um, a savant a performer and what this lad what these ladders do is add extra depth to your character i'm not going to go too much into the length but there are two different set of abilities you get from your ladder one can replace your attribute increase that you get every uh, fourth level so four eight twelve and so on and then you have the normal ladder abilities which looks like you get at fifth eleventh seventeenth and i believe twentieth level after that and they add extra abilities onto your character and they're not just skimpy abilities like hey here's a little bonus uh, skill now these are actual innate abilities or sometimes spell casting abilities depending on what ladder you chose or psionics whatnot and what makes the species and, or races and the ladder different in this game is that some of the abilities while you're creating that character and as you're leveling up and getting to those points where you can get those attributes those bonus attributes at 4 8 and 12 and so on you can use those to increase already abilities that you've obtained from your ladder or species not all but some of them have extra tiers so you can improve upon 
uh, maybe you have a racial identity that's really strong and overpowering and you just keep getting uh, more and more um, almost like a, a paragon of your race or of that ladder kind of making you far more of a say an elf or a human or a, a natural leader or a brawler and then you have your classes now your classes there are 12 different classes and these are not just cut and copy and paste type of classes from the the Dungeons and Dragons handbook or character or player's handbook these are very unique classes with their own unique abilities and of course we have archetypes just like Dungeons and Dragons. Now the archetypes, there's over 30 or almost 30 different archetypes. I think there are 30 archetypes. What is cool about this entire character creation system is that you are not shoehorned into only going, well, if I'm this race, I have to be this class. If I'm this class, I can only be this archetype. Mm -mm. Nope. You can have a different race, a different background, a different ladder, a different class and a different archetype. You could just jumble it all up. If you wanted to be a, a, a human brawler, that's your ladder, um, that maybe was a, a college educated, that's your background. And then you toss in that he's a tech guy, but he's a brawler. And then he's also, you, you really like the gun gunslinger, not gunslinger. Um, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, I think gun kata or something like that. Uh, archetype, you could do that. You can mix it all up and have the most diverse character. Well, more diverse than anything Dungeons and Dragons is able to produce. I'm going to tell you that much right now. And that's why I put a lot of faith and stock into the ultra modern five system It's because it's what Dungeons and Dragons should have been. Maybe it will be someday, but right now it's not. So if you want customization, true customization, this is it for you. So let's get into Affinity. We've already talked about um, all these other ones. So let's talk about, oops, I, I swear I know what I'm doing, folks. There we go. Okay, let's talk about the game. So this is a very um, interconnected game, but it doesn't have to be. So what I mean by that is that all three of these systems, Paradise, Contessogo, and I might, I might be pronounced mispronouncing it in Taurus are all connected. How? That's a spoiler alert. I'm not going to talk about it, but they don't have to be. If you just want one of these books, you can get it. If you just want to delve into one of those settings, go for it. If you want to just have only two of them really tickle you and your group's fancy, get two. If you want all three, great. And if you're not even going to run any of these campaign systems, these source books, but you like some of that content, you can pluck whatever you want out of their dungeon masters and GMs, storytellers, whatever you call yourself, and add it to your game. You can even, if, if, if a, a fellow uh, RPG creator, as I'm working on my own RPG, another creator who is very who is successful and is about ready to launch his book, told me once that make a solid setting that people are going to enjoy because the mechanics really won't matter too much because if they really like what you've done, they will add it to their whatever game setting, whatever game mechanics they're using. So if you like, say you like riffs, the whole concept of riffs from Palladium Games so much, but you don't want to play that very clunky game, but you want to add it to 5th edition, well, you can. You can so much now with Ultra Modern 5. So if even if you don't intend to run this run a fifth edition game, grabbing any of these three source books or all three of them can greatly enhance your game because it's going to have content in there that's going to tickle everybody's fancy for creativity uh, between magic, technology, new creatures, new cl classes, new races. It is a wealth of information that I highly recommend that you do not pass up on. So each of these source books are going to include new races, new backgrounds, new classes, new spell casting systems, if magic is available, um, new types of weapons, gear, armor, uh, definitely tons of new monsters. We're going to have new vehicles. There's a wealth of information locked up in the source in these source books. So 
one thing should be noted, if you intend to play these, you do need the 5th edition source books. Ideally, I think you can get by with just the player's handbook, but of course, a Dungeon Master's Guide is helpful. And a DM screen or Dungeon Master screen is, of course, helpful. But that's it. You don't even have to get the Ultra Modern 5 book, which is uh, which was a little surprising to me. I think the Ultra Modern 5 is definitely a must. I think it's a must because it really enhances what's there. But you already have your player's handbook and your Dungeon Master's Guide more than likely. You pick up the fi Ultra Modern 5, which will be available again during this Kickstarter, or you can still buy it. Um, I think drive through RPG and then your local retailers. But you will need the 5th edition rule set. So let's get on to this a little bit more. Let's see here. Where are we? All right. So the campaign. The campaign itself, um, I should talk about, is when Ultra Modern 5 came out, the affinity system or the affinity source books were already available to that Kickstarter. But over the course of the Kickstarter, which was very successful, that it kind of grew into its own Kickstarter, if you will. So the, the stretch goals became so big that they essentially became their own Kickstarter. Now, if I'm reading everything correctly, and you've likely have already received your emails verifying, if, you, if you've already backed that Kickstarter and you had purchased those books, the affinity books, then you don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to back this. Now, if you want to be cool and be an awesome uh, dungeon master, GM, whatever you call yourself, or fellow player, and you just want to go ahead and back to Kickstarter again, because there are going to be some new um, unlocks that you can get for a, a, a new pledge goals, like upgrades to what you might already have, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you want to hook up your fellow players, get them one of these source books or your GM or your DM, whatever you want to gift it, do so more on the gifting later. Stay tuned. Um, so you don't have to worry about it. So don't worry guys, you're not missing out on anything. So let's talk about the different books very briefly. Uh, I will be doing a follow-up videos for each of these later on this week. So Contest Soga, this is kind of your space opera. Uh, if you're looking for a magic uh, source, uh, kind of source book campaign, this is not going to be ideal for you. Could you include magic? Yes, but I'm going to highly recommend that either A, don't do it at all, or B, get months and months of game time and immerse, immersing yourself and your players into the overall uh, feel and the of the campaign of the source of the source material before you insert something that kind of goes that's not canonical and it kind of goes against everything that's going on. Um, it, it, it basically creates a new headache for you and the players, me talking to you as the GM. So Contest Soga, which I don't know if I'm really mispronouncing, but as they, as they describe it as mech battles for control over a massive spacecraft. So everything takes place on this uh, massive thousands of kilometer long, what I call world ship. And you have all these different dozens of competing factions, um, well, competing against each other, the creatures inside trying to learn, how did we get here? Where, where are we? Where are we going? Who built all this? What is going on? What is the, what is the overall, the who, what, where, when, why, and how behind us being here? And one of the cool, unique features, besides me already talking about, you know, getting new races, new backgrounds, it's, they've got about 30 some odd pages of new gear, um, a crafting system that's not simply, hey guys, I've got these components, I'm going to go ahead and build a laser pistol. Just, that's not a thing, or it could be a thing. I'm still going through the, through the material. But you also can get blueprints, uh, which would help you be able to construct these, which adds another element of, hey guys, um, we could really use this. Let's go see if we can track down these blueprints, which gives your dungeon master, your game master, an idea. It's like, oh, thank you guys. Now I can go ahead and have a little side quest 
little side mission, or we can have a whole lengthy campaign where you go to get this and the components to make it. So there's a lot of potential there just from the item creation system, which if I'm reading right, uh, basically is about 11,000 11, different types of firearms. And if you combine that with some of the things that you can get out of Ultra Modern 5's crafting system, then uh, you could pretty much uh, have one of the most diverse loot system or item creation systems. And then you combine the loot system in Ultra Modern 5 with the like 20 different loot tables in Contest Soga that you are, you're not going to be bored with loot ever again. And people will actually look forward to loot instead of, oh, I got some gold. Oh, is that a, is that a gemstone, a semi-pressure gem? Yay. Oh, we got a couple knickknacks we can sell for like 10, 15 gold. Yay. Oh, a, a sword. Cool. Awesome. No, no, no. Not anymore. You're going to have some amazing uh, loot rolls. And like I said, if you combine it with Ultra Modern 5, whoo boy, you are going to be set. Um, now, the big thing here, besides extra monsters, by the way, I said 40 monsters plus. I think in this book, it's actually around 50. Uh, there is going to be a system for customizing and piloting power armor. Now, this isn't just like, hey, I'm going to get in this uh, type 5 combat marine power armor that gives me plus five to my ac no 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 these are like mech suits uh 40 about 40 different power armor suits with a uh, potential of like 100 plus almost uh, i would say about 150 if i ish uh, maybe 149 48 i'll have to do that count again uh, potential upgrades for those suits so if you're thinking like iron man or your favorite video game out there like uh anthem from bioware now put aside your bias about the con the overall content excuse me for the bioware's anthem game and if you look at how visually stunning and beautiful it is and the groundbreaking gameplay of being able to fly around and to swim and multi-level combat full three-dimensional combat then that is going to really help you immerse yourself into the Contest Soga. Because that's very, there's some similarities there. And there's similarities from a variety of, of genres. But, you know, there's a reason why these similarities or tropes are, uh, are so successful. Because there's something reliable. And having these little twists and tweaks to it is what makes these game systems very, very unique. So let's move on to Paradise. Now, Paradise is the opposite of Contest Soga. Where Contest Soga is a little bit less magic-y. Which, let's just say, no magic. But you got psionics, which is kind of similar. And lots of high technology. Paradise, on the other hand, is more of your traditional magic type of uh, system or campaign or world genre, with one exception. You're basically inside this alien megastructure, uh, basically this full-scale orrery. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Uh, with 12 different kingdoms uh, whirling around each other and a master race of some sort that tends to tinker and interfere with what's going on now technology is forbidden of any kind but it's still there once again you're going to get your new races new backgrounds new classes but it's going to have a new spell casting system using talismans expanded rules for alchemy tons of new magic items tons of new monsters and it's going to be having a kind of a slight combination or inclusion of high technology, super advanced weapons, armor, and gear. But it's not going to be everyday advanced tech like you would find with Contest Soga. It's going to be rare and forbidden. So what is going on? Why is all this happening? Why, who is the, this mysterious race that is interfering with the political atmosphere and creating wars and conflict and policing the operation of technology. Well, that's what you're going to find out with Paradise. 
And finally, the one that's kind of a combination of the two, but its own super unique feel is Taurus. Now, Taurus takes place on a ring-shaped world that basically saw lots and lots of conflict over centuries. And after a massive disaster took place, there's only a few dozen city-states remaining. And they're all interconnected through hundreds of thousands of like train tracks, hundreds of thousands of miles of train tracks that kind of gives an impression, minus the sub-zero uh, temperature thing for the, if you've seen the movie Snowpiercer or the TNT TV show Snowpiercer, or is it HBO Max now? Regardless, if you've seen Snowpiercer, either version, uh, those massive train systems is kind of what's going on here. Now, Taurus combines steampunk plus magic with a dash of the weird wild west and post-apocalyptic world. It's a an amalgamation of, of some really awesome genres. And so far, what I've read is wonderfully blended. Now, once again, new races, new backgrounds, new classes. Uh, new kind of spell system using playing cards reminds me of Hucksters from the Deadlands game, which is now pretty much gone. I, I It's pretty much kind of a defunct system, but it's a very unique system. Uh, tons of new uh, steampunk gear, a new kind of a magic inscription system for enchanting items, new vehicles, new monsters, everything that you need to run Taurus as a standalone. Each of these are a standalone system, or they can be interconnected. You could make one character and start out on Contessoga and keep those same uh, attributes that you rolled, but transfer them over to your other character in Paradise and then transfer them over to your other character in Taurus. Same attributes go over, but you have three different character classes, if that makes any sense. There's a lot that you could do here. Or if you don't even want to run these campaign systems, which I would recommend picking one and, and running it, then just get these books to... Uh, pick and choose what you want out of this. This is going to be a wonderful, wonderful Kickstarter. I'm super excited about this. All right, so this Kickstarter is going to be kicking off, it looks like tomorrow, if I read that correctly, which is absolutely wonderful. Now, what I'm going to do for all of you, because I really, really have a lot of faith in this product I really enjoyed Ultra Modern 5. I've only had a chance to run a couple games in it, and I've got to play in a couple games. But be able to read that book is just, it just has blown my mind. Even as I'm writing my RPG, or when I was writing it initially, I, not going to lie, I started to pick and choose elements out of there that were just so amazing. Uh, now, I've adjusted my rule system to be using Savage Worlds, but... These, man, I tell you what, uh, DSX Machina has created a amazing system. I would say Wizards of the Coast needs to go to Chris Diaz and his people and say, "Hey, we're ready to go ahead and start a new new game system. Could you uh, maybe help us out here?" Instead of all the people that they've actually have working there at Wizards of the Coast, they probably need to talk to Chris. The affinity is going to be. Not necessarily groundbreaking, but it's going to give probably the greatest diversity to a bunch of stale campaign systems. I, 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 I've been playing in the Forgotten Realms games on and off since uh, the late 90s. Uh, Forgotten Realms has been around for a long time, but it's so... We, we know what's going on there. We know where to go. We know who to talk to. It's so easy to metagame. Why not immerse yourself in something that is new and exciting and mysterious where you don't know what's around the corner? You don't know uh, who Elminster is or you don't know anything about, well, anything. That is something that can be so amazing in a role-playing game that can really breathe a lot of new life into your players who are just Oh, okay, we're going to go do a dungeon crawl, and um, I'm going to move 30 feet in. I'm going to do my, my detect 
traps. Oh, there's a trap here. I'm going to roll my disable trap. I'm going to hit the guy with my sword. Oh, look at us. We got some loot. What is it? Oh, 20 pieces of gold and a ruby and a sapphire. Yay. It gets boring. So why not try something new and fresh that's really going to shake up everybody from the GM to the players. Now, I am going to put my full weight behind this that I, as much as I can um, while I'm still looking for unemployment or looking for employment during this uh, pandemic. Um, my resources are limited. So instead of purchasing a the PDF copies or the hardback copies for myself. I'm going to first use that money that I set aside for all of you. So here's what's going to happen. Down below is a subscribe button. Big red button down below. Click on it. Make sure the little notification bell is active. After this Kickstarter campaign is over, I'm going to give away to anybody that's a subscriber to the channel. So if you're already subscribed, congratulations. If you are a new subscriber, you're automatically entered. And if you win, I'm gonna give away one free set of all three of the PDFs. And what we can discuss the logistics of you getting a, the black and white or the color later on. Now, this is gonna be purchased in your name, not my name, so I'm not gonna get a copy of this. And then we'll get that to you. Now, we might be able to work out some combination like, oh my gosh, um, I'm going to get the Taurus, but I didn't, I, I can't afford to get Paradise or uh, Contest Soga. I got you covered, fam. We're going to go ahead and get you. I'm not going to say fam again. That's so weird. I'm going to get you the other two books. I got you covered. Or whatever combination. Maybe get uh, Paradise and Taurus, but you kind of want Contest Soga, but you're not going, you're not sure. I got gotcha. you. And then whatever's left over, we'll make sure we get out to another drawing but that's only if i get 100 subscribers by the end of the campaign that's by the end of the campaign now depending on how long the campaign is if i get a thousand subscribers by the end of the campaign or let's say the end of april we can go ahead and push it to the end of april because i imagine this is a about 30 day uh kickstarter if we get a thousand subscribers here on channel verified honest no bots guys then I will not only give away those PDF copies, but the money that I set aside for all of this, I'll, I'll break it up to where the PDF copies are over there. And then we'll also go ahead and I'll do a paint commission so we can buy a full set of the hardback print books. Okay. Which means that you're also going to get the PDFs. Now, once again, that's going to be purchased in your name, not mine. So I'm not going to get any copies of this. This is how much faith I have in this product and in these books and uh, DSX Machina and how much I have faith in you all, the viewers. So if we make this happen, 100 followers uh, or subscribers for here on YouTube by the end of the campaign, PDF, full PDF set, your choice, whether monochrome or full color is going to go to one winner or some combination. And if we get a thousand subscribers by the end of the month, or by, or by the end of April, or by the end of the Kickstarter, whichever is the longest, then a full set of the print books, along with the accompanying PDF and all the um, stretch goals, is going to go to another winner. Various combination, if we have to break it up because you're getting one book, whatnot, is going to happen. I'm going to do that for you guys because this is, man, I tell you what, Ultra Modern 5, what, what DSX Machina has done is so amazing so later this week after the kickstarter has launched i'm going to continue reading the the preview copies i got for each of these now these are preview copies they're not the full versions it's missing a lot of content and whatnot i'm going to finish reading them and i'm going to do three different separate videos for each of these later on this week it's not going to be a full preview. You're not going to be able to see everything. I'm just going to be talking about these in about a 15 minute video because I want you to be able to see each of these different systems for yourself and be hopefully inspired to back the Kickstarter completely. Get all three copies, whether PDF or print. 
So make sure you jump down below, hit that subscribe button, reach out to your group, make sure they jump down there, hit that subscribe button. If you've got a local Facebook group, jump down there, hit that subscribe button, let them or get them to do it. Post this video up on there so they can do it. Now down below also, once you hit that subscribe button, you go down to the description. I have the link that's up on the screen right now. I'm going to have that there. I'm also going to have links for my Instagram and the Facebook page for Havoc Maker Studio, which will have updates and links to the videos. So you help me out. I'm going to help you out. And we're going to, we're going to help out uh, uh, DSX Machina produce the Affinity game, which it's going to come out. But how much more are we going to get out of it with our support? I don't know. That's a lot. That's an awful lot, guys and gals. So my name is John. This is Havoc Maker Studio. This has been a very brief preview of the Infinity Kickstarter. Look forward to more this week. Make sure to hit that, that subscribe button. Leave a like and a comment. I'll see you guys later on this week.